Residents of Riot City, welcome to the RCW wrap-up show for Reanimated. We had an incredible night at HQ Complex in the middle of Adelaide. Joining me for the recap show is the blue chip athlete, Dean Brady. Dean? How you doing? Yeah, good man. How are you? I'm well. We were also supposed to be joined by the South African superstar Steve, Stephen Miller, but... Uh, How many times have I to tell you? It's Steve Miller. What is he doing here? Has a chest. It's fine, mate. How's yours? Let's see it. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's, let's not get into that right now, guys. You're here for the wrap-up show, not to start that epic chop-off again. But we will get to that. We will get to that. Reanimated kicked off with the young Kit Condor taking on the returning Tony Toro. You're, of course, very familiar with Kit Condor. Yeah, yeah, Sean. I was lucky enough to have one of his first matches. And he does some flips and stuff. It's going to be a while until I'm impressed by the guy. Nonetheless, I think he put on a very impressive display. Dean Brady, Tony Toro, always a tough competitor, but now coming back from his international training, even more dangerous, do you think, in 2019? I definitely wouldn't put it past him to have um, learned a few tricks over at Landstorm's Academy and definitely did the job for him on Friday. Dean, where'd you learn your chops from? They're weak, mate. Weak? Seemed to get the better of you. Well, let's talk about that match for a minute. The two of you were involved in a hellacious four-way match at HQ. Dean Brady, Steve Miller versus Kurt Barron and KD Trey. What is it like contesting a match under fatal four-way rules? It's unknown. You got no idea what's coming at you. Dean, we've got unfinished business. If you say so. Kurt, he deserved the win. It's a big win there by Kurt Barron, proving his dominance over the rest of the competitors. But Dean, you were taken out of the match by an unexpected participant. Yeah, I definitely had that match in the bag, Sean. Um, James Cray, I don't know what got into him. Um, he's definitely done a number on me and uh, he hasn't seen the last of me. I thought the Millennials were back on the same page. Yeah, me too. Um, I guess not. In the always red-hot RCW women's division, we had the Princess of Perfection, Savannah Summers, take on the A-lister, Blair Alexis. A tough loss there for Blair, Dean Brady. Oh, definitely. It was uh, two veterans of the women's division going at it, and Savannah being uh, the more experienced veteran, you know, got out on top. Steve, who do you think it is in the division that will be able to unseat our champion, impressive Indy Hartwell? To be honest, Sean, could be anyone. Really, they've all just got to get out there, prove their way, because Indy, she's hell of a fighter. It was supposed to be the main event of the evening. However, world-class Chris Basso came out early in the night and demanded his rematch against the Dark King, Zack Sabbath. This gentleman was a confrontation for the ages. I'll tell you something, Sean. Chris Basso, he's fast. He's strong, and he's a multi-time former Riot City champion. That was one match to watch. I mean, Chris definitely had a plan going into it. Um, he was going to try and catch the champ off guard, but I think that uh, the numbers game, two on one with Selena, um, you know, that got the better of him. And speaking of Selena, she had an unexpected end to her evening as we had another surprise, the Riot City Wrestling debut of the official ego, Matt Hayter. Look, Sean, I've seen Matt Hayter around for a few years. I'm not too sure what his deal is, but they say he's good, so he definitely left his mark by kicking Selena in the face. That's what I was going to say, left his mark all over Selena's face. Dean Brady, what do you think this will do to the dynamics within the locker room and the power balance within Riot City? It's definitely changed it up a little bit. Like, where did that come from? I didn't see that coming, and uh, I don't think Selena did either. It was such an action-packed night that things were even going on at half-time. The difference, Tyler Daniels demanding an end to his suspension and being told by General Manager Luke Santa Maria that he must win his match at our next RCW Live event in order to have his suspension ended. Gentlemen, Tyler Daniels, this situation just keeps unfolding. The difference, Tyler Daniels, he didn't just get that name. He's an a and that's why I like him. I mean... He's an like, what more can you say? But he's definitely going to do whatever he knows he can do to get that win. HQ was also the battleground for one of the biggest feuds we've seen in recent RCW history, as the Rude Ones, Marvel and Bulldog, took on the team of Gods and Monsters, the Viking Grimm and the Gladiator, Big Brody Marshall. Dean Brady, this one shook the foundations of HQ. It definitely did. The, the amount of years of experience and ring time that those four men and two women who've had in RCW, that's like 
four of my lifetimes. That is a long time, so uh, yeah, not surprising. A very hard-hitting match, a very brutal match at times, but we saw Gods and Monsters take away the win and close out the series against the Rude Ones 2-1. To be honest, Sean, I'm pretty surprised that Gods and Monsters go on top. The Rude Ones, they've been around for many, many years. Gods and Monsters recently formed, but with, with that series win, those tag titles, the prayer, they better look after them. The other unexpected news of the night was that Hammer has been forced to retire from wrestling due to injury. Hammer, thank you very much for all that you have done for Riot City, for the fans and for the locker room. The show, of course, must go on. General Manager Luke Santamaria announcing that the new key to the city holder would be the winner of the match between Rocky Monero and Adam Brooks. Gentlemen, we were expecting a clinic. We got that. We were expecting a friendly competition and that's not quite what we got. Yeah, they definitely had a good wrestle. They had a good go for it. And I would say they were probably caught a little bit off guard. So I'm not surprised that they went into it kind of, you know, nice and slowly, but things definitely picked up towards the end and by God, what a match. I was very concerned at one point, Adam Brooks, of course, hurting his leg. It looked like Rocky Monero had hurt his head. That wasn't the case. You know, when he took that DDT on the outside on the apron, I thought the same as well. Rocky, he's getting on, he's growing in age. You know, he capitalized, he had to do what he had to do to take Adam Brooks out, who's a great wrestler. And uh, he came out on top as the uh, new key to the city holder. Very wily, very smart by the icon. He is, of course, now in line to unlock a title opportunity whenever he wishes. Perea did indeed look after their tag belts in one of the most hotly anticipated main events in recent RCW history as they took on Nick and Jet, the Armstrongs. Brothers reunited, they said that blood is thicker than water, they said their brotherhood was stronger than the friendship bond, the brotherhood of the Perea. That's not what we saw. Now you, of course, have teamed with Jet Armstrong in the past. What did you think of this match? The match was unreal. It's hard hitting, it was fast, it was clinical. I've also teamed with Nick Armstrong, and that guy in the ring, he is smart. He is on another level, and to be honest, the Perea, their chemistry at the moment, I'm not sure who's gonna beat him. Dean Brady, you've had many memorable encounters with the Perea. What do you think is the secret of their success? They've just got that intangible factor that you can't measure. They've got heart. For some reason, they manage to come out on top no matter what anybody puts in their way, whether it be tables, ladders, chairs, experience, brotherhood, whatever. They're coming out on top because they need to, not because they want to. Residents, that's all we have time for here on the RCW Wrap-Up Show. Please join us again on February 23rd for our next live event at the RCW Academy. And then on March 23rd for Mega Slam, we are on the road to the Strength Cup. Sean, just like your head, polish that cup. It's coming South Africa's way. And Dean, don't ever chop me again. Uh, we'll see about that. And the Strength Cup was uh, built for me, buddy.